I, let's get this together in 36 months. And everybody else is like, well, I just heard I could do this in 30 days. So I have an undergraduate degree in exercise science with a minor in pre-med. And then I have a master's degree in biomechanics with a emphasis on sports nutrition and anatomy. No, 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 you got the wrong guy. I'm not waiting until I get injured, then do it. I'm doing it so I'm set up to win. Yeah. I, can you do me a favor? Just so these people understand, will you give them a breakdown on your degrees? Yeah, sure. So I have an undergraduate degree in exercise science with a minor in pre-med. And then I have a master's degree in biomechanics with a emphasis on sports nutrition and anatomy. That's all. <laughs> obviously, CSCS, I have every... I'm actually on the, the board for the Pentagon for um, all of the military uh, um, physical wellness training that has changed. I was on the electoral board for that. I'm also on the ASCA electoral board in Australia for their strength conditioning programs for rugby and soccer. And then I've spoke at least 15 NSCA national um, things where you're talking, you know, pro strength coaches from every pro team are there listening to what you're saying. So You've been doing this a long time. Before you before you finish this list of uh, accomplishments mentally, tell me about the records that you set and the ages you were doing this at. Sure. I won my first world title at 19, totaling being one of the first teenagers to total 2,000 drug-free. And then I went into the USAPL Collegiate Nationals where I was drug tested every 12 to 14 weeks because you know how hard the IPF testing and the USAPL WADA testing is. Um, so I got second place the first, uh, my first collegiate nationals at 20 years old and then was never beaten from 21, 22, and 23, and then broke every American record in the USAPL, including the collegiate national title in 2003 with an 826 squat at 270 body weight, 575 bench, and a 720, 722 deadlift, um, all while getting a 4.0 in school. Uh, so, and, and, and then the way you read because you have my equipment in your gym i was also welding at the hospital on the weekends because they wanted a skilled labor guy on the weekends and obviously nobody wants to work weekends well that was the only time i had available so to pay for school i worked saturdays and sundays as a welder at the local hospital and fix anything that was broke on the weekends so they didn't have to call in skilled labor so i got a client that just lives on the belt squat and I'm, I'm talking to a legend, Billy Gunn, later because we have to get him more developed legs. Sure. Um, but he's been he's 58. He's been wrestling since 1991. Yeah, I know. Him. He's a he's a much bigger human in person than anybody on here will understand. Yeah. Uh, frame wise. Yeah. Uh, he because he's so proportionate on TV. I thought he was six foot. And then you meet him in person. I'm like. You're a freaking walking mountain. Yeah. But he, he's been banged up. Wrestling, you're going to get banged up. Oh, you're yeah. Get banged up. So his lower back's a little tweaked. And so we're going to figure out a workout. And one of the main things we want to keep him on um, is the belt squat, your belt squat. So we're actually place. doing some of the same things that you're talking about. I do a lot of the online coaching, and I help out Stone Cold Steve Austin. Tell Steve I said hi. Yeah, I will. He's the best. He's the best, man. Okay. All right. I need... Because today was my first day ever doing, uh, I'm very, you know this, I'm just like you in the sense of we're preventative. We're fixing things before they go bad. Go exactly. to the chiropractor, do a massage. Well, what are you working on? Why are you getting a massage? Why are you going to the chiropractor? What's wrong with your back? No, 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 no. You, you got the wrong guy. I'm not waiting until I get injured, then do it. I'm doing it so I'm set up to win. And so today was the first time I tried something new, very advanced. I did PRP today. Yeah. So we went down there, they pulled the blood, took out the right white and red, put the platelets back in and everything. So it was a cool thing. And that got me to thinking, what does a champion as yourself, both physically and mentally, um, come up with five recovery ideas? And they could be whatever you want. Um, they could be the basic typical or whatever you think. But what are five great options to help the body recover? Awesome. That's a great question because you know that's my wheelhouse. The first thing that I think recovery has to be built into your training. And what I mean by that is that if you read a lot of the Eastern 
German and Soviet literature and even the Bulgarian literature, they train very, very difficult for three to three and a half weeks and they take one to three um, sessions down and let the body rejuvenate. It's not what you can do, it's what you can recover from. So your training has to build in deloading and unloading and recovery means. Um, and that's where I think a lot of people make mistakes is they feel good, so they think that they should just keep training harder. And then when the rut finally hits- I think it's worse. It's way I think, it's worse. I think people think, hey, it's Tuesday, I trained yesterday, I got trained today. They, they won't even comprehend anything about what's going on in their life. You don't grow in the gym. You grow outside of the gym under low stress environments. I also want to let the fans know that may not know this, that are new to this whole understanding about training. Not much. No, nobody who trains harder. I'm sorry, America. Not many train harder than the Soviets and the Bulgarians and stuff and how they've trained. And their principles today. Because they had the government backing to put them in camps and train them and take away their stressors. And, you know, so we can use some of their, their guidelines and some of their training protocols. But what we have to understand is that those were those guys' jobs, right? So you have to, you know, the first thing we do with online coaching, which is I'm sure you do with Titans, is like the first thing you ask someone is, what do you do for work? How good is your sleep? Et cetera, et cetera. Then you design the fucking program. But I just talked to a guy who says, I get five hours, sometimes four. I write back and go, I don't want to train you. No. Nope. Uh-uh. Nope. Unless you can guarantee me you're going to get seven, seven and a half at least. I don't want nothing to do with you. And your goal I'm paying you to train me. Right. Like money. If you decide to take them on. The goals that you have for your year, you're going to take those in three years. So we have to increase the timeline because if whatever you goal you have in 12 months, you better take 36 months if you don't have all your recovery set in place. Yeah, they ain't going three years. Right. It's hard to keep them on for three months. You know oh, that. It's that. And that's why we've almost had a big issue. And, you know, we're going off on a different tangent on here, but I think it needs to be said. That's why marketing is so screwed up in the fitness industry and everybody's pissed off is because you and me both tell everybody, let's get this together in 36 months. And everybody else is like, well, I just heard I could do this in 30 days. <laughs> Go with that person. I'll yeah. see you in 31 <laughs> days. Right? All right. So so the one is which nobody talks about is how you set up your training. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. So we set up the training to build in the deloads and unloads, whether we want to or not. That's step one. Step two, every hour of sleep is two times as recuperative before midnight than after midnight. I learned that from Charles Poliquin. So what do I do? I'm in bed at 8, 30, 9 o'clock. I may not be dead asleep, but I'm starting the relaxation process in order for me to get deep sleep before 10, way before 10. And it doesn't that's faltering. How deep did you go into the studying of sleep? Because I'd love you to go into this. Talk about the sleep, if you can, uh, the hours before two, uh, eight to two, and then uh, two to six. Because the, the, those are two different um, recovery systems. Yes. For the body. And I don't think people realize, oh, my whole body's recovering. No, actually, this portion is recovering here and this portion is recovering. It's an amazing thing how the mood and it goes and how it rotates and right and i think a lot of that a lot of that research came from third shift workers in factories they started to realize that even though they might still be getting eight hours of sleep because the timing of it was so screwed up the growth hormone outputs the igf1 all those natural recovery means they just go kaput and even though they might be asleep the body is not asleep when it wants to be to recover optimally. Yes, you can survive off of doing this other shit that people say, but we're talking optimization here. You and I, both of our lives and the people that we try to touch, we try to optimize. We don't try to put band-aids on bullet holes, right? So the big thing is, is you have to be asleep very early in order for all these hormones to come out and make big play. And Charles did this with all of his athletes in the 80s and 90s and had all of this data that he didn't share with people. I yeah. talked all the time and people are like oh that doesn't matter this and that and i'm like well there's a reason that i still squat 900 pounds at 43 years old and you can't squat 315 so i don't think we need to have this conversation you want to drop that mic do you have a mic there you can just drop for us that's awesome <laughs> I, 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 mean, I hope they're sucking this up i hope they understand this again both you and i cannot teach anybody anything we can just make them think yeah um, and that's that's what we're trying to do today is get them to think about this concepts and, and what we're talking about 
Exactly. Uh, because these are the little details when people say, hey, Mike, how do you still do it? We just, uh, he's telling you right now how I'm doing this. 